Well, let's get more on this now with Michael Leach. He's a professor in politics and international relations at Swinburne University of Technology. And he joins us now from East Timor's capital, Dili. Welcome to the program, Professor. The vote count is now over and we understand that the Nobel laureate Jose Ramos Horta seems to have an edge over Francisco Luolo Guterres. What are each of the presidential hopefuls promising to deliver should they win? Well, the um, the vote is not quite over, uh, Count. Uh, we're about 30% uh, into the vote. But certainly, Jose Ramos Horta appears to be uh, safely in the lead. Uh, we'll find out tomorrow what the final result is. Um, the two candidates, one is promising continuity. Uh, the other is promising a change in the government and a return uh, of Shinona Guzmao uh, to the government. The president is not the most powerful figure in the Timorese political system. It's the prime minister. So for Shinana Guzmao, who backed Jose Remus Horta, he's hoping that this is step one of two steps to get back into government and prosecute the uh, oil and gas uh, refinery on the south coast that you mentioned in your story and return to, return to government more generally. Now, so far, we know since in the 20 years that East Timor has gained its independence, it was those who were fighting for the country's freedom who have been running the country. Is there an appetite for some sort of generational change in terms of uh, leadership in the country? Yes, there is. Uh, there were some very uh, interesting new candidates in the first round presidential election, a couple of women who did rather well, and some younger candidates. There is a sense that the elder generation from 1975 who dominated the resistance to the Indonesian occupation still dominate politics, but this might be the last set of elections in which they do so. So this next five years will be important for seeing who these leaders bring through as younger leaders to take over from them in five years' time. East Timor has one of the youngest populations in the region with an average age of 20 years, but the country's youth are facing rising unemployment. What needs to be done to turn the economy around and create those opportunities for young Timorese? Yes, uh, it has a median age of 18, which means that half the population is under 18. What that means, if you compare that to uh, Europe, that figure would be something more like 38. You've got to provide more job opportunities and more training opportunities per head of population than some of the more advanced democracies do. This is a big challenge. So the real key question is, Timor-Leste is doing better than some other developing countries because it has its oil and gas, but that uh, resource is finite. Uh, it's likely to last only 10 to 15 years. And in that time, uh, as your other speaker noted, the economy needs to be diversified to provide the jobs and the training opportunities for young people into the future. This is a very young population. This is not going to change. Every year there's going to be young people coming through the system until the birth rate drops in this country. And uh, that is a big policy challenge for the leadership going ahead over the next decade. We know Australia played a key role in helping to secure East Timor's independence 20 years ago, but relations at one point soured over gas royalties. Has that issue been resolved? And how would you describe the relationship between Australia and East Timor right now? The, the relationship between East Timor is much better now. It did go through a very bad period, as you note, uh, while Australia was refusing to settle a maritime boundary with Timor-Leste, which was Timor-Leste's right under international law. Since that issue was finally resolved in 2018, relations between Australia and Timor-Leste are back on track. Ministers are visiting again. Australia played a really important role in helping Timor-Leste counter the COVID threat in the last couple of years, played a really important role in flood relief as well. Relations between Australia and Timor-Leste, it's a long time since they've been this good. So that's terrific news uh, for, both, for both parties. OK, Professor Michael Leach, we will have to leave it there. But thank you so much again for joining us here on TRT World.